let's start by introducing Vanessa Spark um, and also Neil Moody. Uh, welcome, Vanessa. You're from Maritime Safety Victoria. Uh, thanks yes. for joining us. Thanks, Justin. No, thanks for inviting us along to speak today. Um, to give you a back, bit of background of who I am, I'm a boater safety education officer in an extremely passionate recreational boating team. Uh, Maritime Safety Victoria often gets confused because we often turn up in a Transport Safety Victoria car and we're branded that way. So Maritime is part of Transport Safety uh, Victoria. So we're basically the regulators of all Victorian waterways and there are over 600 waterways across uh, Victoria. So there's inland waters, enclosed waters, which is our bay and coastal waters. And I know um, Dr. Peden mentioned the Murray River. The Murray River is actually New South Wales waters. So that doesn't come in our uh, statistics. Uh, yeah, yeah, look, that's been a long running debate and a challenge from a prevention <laughs> perspective. Um, I'm going to come back to you, uh, Vanessa, because I've, I've got a few questions, but let me introduce Neil Moody from uh, the Bureau of Meteorology. Thanks for joining us, Neil. Thank you, Justin. Uh, just a yes, little bit about my, your background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My role is um, looking after the Bureau's marine weather services. That entails the, um, the essentially the boating sort of style forecasts about winds and waves on the coastlines and also some of our... Uh, uh, local waters, sort of capital city harbours and, and lakes. Uh, so we have um, a strong focus on some of the warning products as well we provide in terms of wind warnings, uh, targeted boaters, as well as um, the wave warnings that are targeted at some of the rock fishes, which I know we'll talk about later. Basically, the second part of that wave warning is also focused on boats crossing ocean bars. So that's, a, that's an important sort of aspect. So thank you. Thanks. Um, thanks for joining us, because it must be a pretty significant day in weather terms, given that there's some some pretty significant weather across Victoria and, and it's snowing, uh, you know, all up and down the uh, Great Dividing Range. So thank you. Um, Vanessa, I, I just wonder whether um, we underestimate the, the contribution that government makes through the transport portfolio. And so the maritime safety plans that are in existence all around the country, most state governments have a really good investment in this area. Um, uh, you know, can you kind of talk to those investments and, and, and the key areas of the maritime safety plans across the country or, or more specifically from Victoria's take? Yeah, look, um, our basically is to promote shaping uh, safer journeys across uh, Victoria and to deliver community education programs to promote safe bo boating. Um, and basically our aim is that every boater on any water should return ho home safely from being a day out on the water and achieve zero fatal fatalities. Uh, and do you have in Victoria sort of life jacket campaigns and programs? Because that's one of the things that the, the water safety strategy calls for. Yeah, just recently we ran a float safe campaign across uh, nine locations in Victoria. And that was basically to get people to maintain and service their life jackets, which has been a highly successful program. Um, and Neil, the, one of the other areas of the strategy in this area is, um, is greater partnership with the Bureau and getting weather messages out. How are you going about doing that? Yeah, no, it's an important uh, aspect because, you know, ideally you would love to get uh, high connection with some of the way the weather data, which is, you know, presented in some of the values and then having, you know, a, a response by the sort of audience. So, you know, that'd be the ultimate sort of game. So to have that uh, connection, you've obviously got to work with the partners and uh, sort of establish that linkage and, and get that last mile communication going um, down to that sort of target audience, whether it's on the rock platforms or at the beach uh, interface or on the boats themselves. Uh, so, yeah, we've got um, a number of initiatives that we've been working with different uh, partner agencies around the marine safety agencies and surf life savings groups and, um, yeah, looking at sort of the data and matching up uh, how we can sort of link the incidents and the environmental conditions surrounding those and then look at ways we could look at that from a um, presentation of information and also potentially thresholds for uh, actual public warnings. So, yeah, it's a... Um, We've already got some established uh, mechanisms in New South Wales, for example, with the rock fishing and, and the boat um, hazardous surf warning. But, um, yeah, other jurisdictions, I'm sure um, we can have the same sort of pattern and, and work through that. Um, Vanessa, I think there's some questions in the chat um, or, or uh, prior just about the use of data uh, in planning 
um, from a mar from a Victorian perspective. Do you what's sort of what's the evaluation agenda? What's the data role in planning your activities? Or is there one? There is um, incident reports come through, uh, mainly focusing on our fatalities. Um, there's been ten fatalities in both of the last two years. Um, a lot of the other data that we get is about breakdown of boats, about rescues, about people overboard. And then sadly, a lot of the data we actually, um, incidental data, say about severe injuries that occur, they sometimes don't get reported. And it's very difficult to get that information out of the hospitals of how many main, minor or major injuries occur and through the ambulances. So the data that we rely heavily on, sadly, are the fatalities that occur that do have an impact on, that drive our campaigns for the coming year. And I'm, I, I, I'm, I've lost my uh, I've lost my script, but I think we had a video in this session that we were going to use, and someone's going to madly shake their head at me if we didn't. Um, here we go. A compliance crackdown on our waterways. Police out in force for a statewide summer safety blitz. One, two, three, four. These boats free to go. But others handed hefty fines during this weekend's high visibility Operation Armada. Oh, sorry, didn't know that. More than 100 officers across the state targeting dangerous behaviour and testing for not so sober skippers. Thankfully, no positive tests were returned, but 60 infringement notices were issued, mostly for speeding, not having the right safety equipment, and failing to wear a life jacket. We know this is going to be a very busy summer across our waterways. Licence applications are up. Purchase a stand up paddle boards, jet skis. You can't buy jet skis until October next year. While this operation ends tonight, police say their blitz on bad boating behaviour will continue throughout the summer, targeting vessels big and small and promising a zero tolerance approach. You will be booked or you will be arrested and charged with those offences. Amber Laidler, Seven News. Vanessa, so you, you've talked about sort of education. Um, does enforcement play a role in the Victorian approach as well? Yes, we do. We do um, have an enforcement and compliance team and we also work very closely with Victorian police and the Victorian police work on our behalf, uh, the waterway police based in Gippsland and in Melbourne to ensure and enforce the regulations here on our waterways. We also work very closely uh, with the Victorian fishing authority here in a, and also Parks Victoria and also many local councils. And by working with them, they also operate as compliance and as education officers to regulate and educate our community. So we do have enormous amounts of engagement with lots of uh, organisations throughout Victoria, such as Parks Victoria, as I've said, the water police, um, the fisheries, Local councils also send our messages through their own authorised offices too. And we also work with uh, the volunteer communities such as the Coast Guard um, and also Victorian Marine and Rescue. And it's, it's really, really helpful that, yes, we have a compliant, compliance component, but at Maritime, we believe also education is at the forefront of uh, getting people to change their behaviour, not just relying on getting a um, ticket at the end of the day. And that's one great thing about our compliance team is they also do a lot of education as well. And same with fisheries, they really support uh, us in doing sending the boating safety education messages too because many of our people that are on boats do come from the fishing community and we also in that respect we work very closely with a lot of the fishing clubs in Victoria uh, we host seminars and we also um, uh, make lots of visits to regional shows uh, and lots, lots of different events. So at Maritime, sorry if I'm going on a bit, Justin, but at Maritime, we really spread ourselves across the community and agencies in so many different ways. As just recently, we've, we've discovered, we've done this, as I mentioned earlier, a float safe um, campaign of teaching people how to maintain and service their life jackets. As we've discovered in the last, you know, several years that people aren't maintaining their inflatable life jackets. So yes, they have their life jacket on, but when they go to pop the life jacket, it doesn't work. So, sorry, getting to my other point. So after completing um, all these 
amazing campaigns that were, it was extremely successful across regional and metropolitan Victoria. The thing that when we did our evaluation at the end, what we discovered, it was face-to-face -face education over a period of time that is having an enormous impact of us getting our messages out there to to the community and the fact that, you know, the local council would come along, fisheries would come along as we delivered our messages. It was one big face delivering the same consistent messages. And it, it's been wonderful to the point, you know, the councils are saying, can you please come back and continue this program next year? But the really key thing, I think the points are I'm trying to get to, it's face-to-face -face has proven to be our most successful way to get people um, to be safe on the water. Thanks, Justin. Great, thanks Thanks very much, Vanessa. I think you, you're really speaking to the complexity of bringing stakeholders together. Um, mm -hmm. You've listed off many. Amy was also talking about this in sort of a multi-sectoral coordinated response. Um, but Lisa, I should acknowledge that, um, that you're one very strong voice um, from a, a network across the country of people doing similar and wonderful things mm -hmm. in many other states. Um, and ANSBEG is one of the groups that coordinates uh, for that, uh, um, that cohort of people that contribute to the Australian water safety strategy. Um, Vanessa, I'd like to say goodbye and, and thank you very much for joining us. We're going to move on to rock fishing now. So thank you very much. Have a great day.